This podcast is being brought to you by WXAV 88.3 FM and WXAV.com. WXAV, bringing the best podcasts to you. Hi, this is DJ Holiday here, and I, today I'm here with... Unknown Caller. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. So you guys are a new up-and-coming band. What's going on with that? What's the best part about the new music scene? Yeah, um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so this uh, summer I put out three singles, and um, it's, uh, it's, it's been good to uh, kind of get back into the uh, swing of things in terms of, you know, uh, the music scene kind of coming back up post-COVID. I think we're going to try to book some shows uh, at the top of next year. Um, but yeah, I mean, the New York music scene has definitely started to come back to life, so it's, it's great to see. Absolutely, absolutely. So now you kind of started up during the whole pandemic thing and everything. How would you say that was? And would you say there are any challenges you had to overcome in that process? Um, definitely. It's uh, so we uh, I had kind of taken a break from from writing um, since I think probably around uh, the two singles I put out in 2018. So mm -hmm. uh, the pandemic in a way was kind of a opportunity to sit down and, and kind of, you know, have that isolation to, to start writing again. And um, I kind of wanted to write three singles that felt, you know, kind of more uplifting and, and more chilled out and kind of offer um, a relief from, uh, from just COVID and everything. And um, I wanted to kind of make them summery as well. So mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, they all came out um, from April to June, and um, it was a uh, it was a lot of fun to write those. And I think those are probably some of my favorite songs that I've put out. Absolutely. So, what were some of the like bands or artists that really influenced you in you, in the writing process? Do you think? Um, I'd say that Toro y Moi is definitely up there. Um, mm -hmm. He's an artist that I've always kind of looked up to, and I've always really admired the ability um, that he had to kind of uh, jump between genres, album to album, you know, starting as kind of a chill wave pioneer and then on what for kind of moving to more of, um, a Steve Miller-esque like seventies rock sound. Um, and then, yeah, just like experimenting more with soul trash and, and more of his music. Um, I'd say I, uh, really found a lot of inspiration from Tyler, the creator too. a lot of his production specifically. Mm -hmm. um, influenced a lot of the sounds on uh, on the track Borderline that I put out, kind of the woozy, kind of funky sense. Um, I'd say uh, Tatsuro Yamashita. He's mm -hmm. a um, Japanese artist who has been around for a while. Um, I really like his 80s catalog stuff. Um, really a cool kind of jazz influence um, that mixes into pop music. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of who else. Wolfpack always is an influence. I love the the funk production on a lot of their tracks. Mm -hmm. um, George Clanton as well. Um, I think the the vaporwave scene is is really really cool. And um, at the top of the year, I actually I put out a kind of vaporwave project myself to kind of explore the genre a bit and as really? a kind of exercise and in production and aesthetics. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun to put out. Um, but yeah, I'd say that kind of group of artists uh probably had the biggest influence of my music this year wow that's like a pretty wide variety too i would say you're kind of all over the place with that but that's really cool i think it's good to be well versed and kind of going a little bit everywhere you know yeah for sure i um i'm definitely a fan first when it comes to listening to music i uh just love exploring lots of different genres and um my, my spotify discover weekly is definitely all over the place so uh, i think that reflects uh kind of where i'm at right right no that's true that's true um and i have to ask where did the uh the name come from you know i um when i first started up the project back in 2016 i was just kind of thinking of different names and and kind of did some associations of moods and feelings and ideas um i don't know at the time i just thought uh unknown caller sounded pretty cool and um I, yeah, I just kind of love the vibe that came with it. It's, it's something that I think uh, everyone <laughs> has experienced too, just getting a, a call from, a, from an unknown number. 
Um, so I kind of, yeah, I kind of like the, the mystery around it and, and uh, just the overall vibe. And I thought it was, uh, yeah, it had a lot of potential to, to kind of create a bunch of different sounds underneath that moniker. Right. No, for sure. For sure. I think it's, I think it's a really interesting name because you can really go anywhere with that. Um, I was just wondering if it's because, you know, everybody's kind of memeing on the whole, like your car's extended warranty thing. So I don't know if that was in reference <laughs> to like a joke or yes. something. I think, uh, I think an album, of, a concept album about a car's extended warranty is definitely, um, in the cards in the future for sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, that'd be funny, almost. I, and that, you know, I just thought about that because I was like, oh, like, it kind of reminds me of how that's like kind of like the meme going around now because everybody's getting those phone calls, you know? <laughs> right. So I'd, Classic. Yeah. Maybe I'll uh, use it as a sample. <laughs> you could. You could. You never know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you never know what the future holds. So out of all the right. uh, the pieces you've done so far, what would you say is the project you're the most, fo- um, the most proud of? Hmm. Um, that's a good question. I think borderline kind of encompasses a lot of um yeah just a lot of uh a lot of different things for me and i I was i kind of been working on it for the past uh two years or so so um you know it's definitely been kind of a a long writing process for that song um kind of picking it up and, and putting it down and picking it up again um and i just love the the sounds on it i've kind of always been exploring different synth sounds and, and different ways to kind of um yeah like express ideas musically and i think a lot of just the, the production on borderline was a lot of fun to write and kind of encompasses um kind of a, a sum of different influences that led up to that song that's really cool that's interesting i always like to hear like what an artist's most like proud project of theirs is because like everybody has a different reason as to why they're proud of it like did they work on that one the most did they just really like the outcome did they like, you know, did their fans like it the most? And that's why they're really proud of it. You know, it's really cool to have like the different reasons behind why they're proud of like the piece and which piece they are the most proud of. Definitely. And I think the, I mean, I've been super grateful for the response as well and, and the support um, from you guys uh, mm-hmm. too, from, from just uh, supporting the music. So uh, I really appreciate it. No, absolutely. And I got to ask, what does college radio mean to you? College radio, I think, um, is a really unique format because I think there's so much passion inherently around this format that isn't necessarily found um, in other kind of mediums in a way. I think it was just such a community built around college radio. And Mm -hmm. um, when I was um, an intern at a record label um, uh, quite a while back when I was in college, um, we would interface with a lot of college radio contacts a lot. And um, I could just tell there was such a genuine passion about the music. And it's, it's really cool to, um, to experience that with my own music. And uh, yeah, it's been a really cool process for sure to, uh, to uh, hear music played on college radio. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that you've had these like pretty good experiences with it and everything. Uh, I got to ask, do you got any new music coming up that we should be aware of? Um, yeah, so it's funny, during the summer after putting out those three singles, I kind of took a little break and mm-hmm. was kind of kicking back and trying to enjoy the weather and get oh, outside yeah. more and get off social media. Um, but uh, yeah, now that it's fall, I think um, I'm starting to kind of get back into the swing of writing things. Um, I've been uh, doing lots of collaboration with other artists as well. Um, there's one artist who I've been working on a track with. Um, Her name is Goldfishy, Mm -hmm. um, super, super talented writer and an artist. And we played a show, um, a while back and, um, yeah, she's based in Manila. So we've been doing zoom sessions and just kind of refining ideas and and putting some different melodies and lyrics together. So that's been a lot of fun. So definitely look out for potential collaboration tracks in the future and, um, yeah, I just kind of have my, my head down in Ableton right now and trying to uh, create some new material. No, that's totally awesome. I'm really excited for you, and we're all excited to hear what else you got coming for us and everything. But, yeah, thank you so much for doing this little interview with me and talking with me for a little bit. Everybody greatly appreciates it. I know I greatly appreciate it. 
Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me. This is really fun. Absolutely. So hopefully we get to hear some more from you soon. Thank you very much for listening to this WXAV 88.3 FM podcast. Be sure to visit our website, WXAV.com, for more information on your escape from Ordinary Radio.